Oh man, very nice, Danny. Danny always crushes it with the the intro, man. I'm always impressed. Halfway asleep, turns on like that. He's like, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's the switch. Like he he's a natural star. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not so much right. Yeah, I just kind of I flow in, flow out, and that's kind of like uh, the the topic of what we're discussing and philosophy and woo woo and stuff that's uh hopefully interesting for you guys and we're on episode nine uh told danny i was pretty proud of it <laughs> we're already on episode nine that means danny and i have had more conversations i've had more conversations than any person anybody like you know so Danny's my guy. <laughs> he does my life. You guys know my life and everything. So it's a, uh, it's a friendship. It's a business relationship. It's a, uh, it's cool. You know, it's interesting uh, for me to see it uh, unfold as well too. So I think uh, everybody that's watching, I think it's cool too because uh, I'm looking forward to like creating a lot of stuff. So the more platforms that I can share some of my insights and wisdom and uh, collaborate and help. You know, I guess the mission, the mission is to elevate the collective vibrations and everything. So that's the, that's the mission is elevate the collective vibrations. Uh, talk a little bit more about woo woo, make a little bit more mainstream and, uh, and, you know, spread our knowledge and wisdom and help each other out as much. I think personal development is my, my field of interest and in helping people grow. And typically before the, uh, the show starts, we talk about what's what's important to us and what we talk about uh, uh, the meat and potatoes of our show or the topic of discussion. And today's topic of discussion is going to be about, uh, I guess, defining masculinity. And this is this is very important because it's very, uh, to me, it, it seems very confusing at times because there's a lot of stuff in the media that kind of um confuses people and i think talking about vulnerability in men and masculinity and defining how it's not being weak you know i think that's that's something that um is interesting and then also too like men's mental health is a very big uh it's 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 close to me because i i went through some mental health issues and i know uh other people are out there struggling as well too so opening up and talking about masculinity and being vulnerable is an important thing of being a masculine person, you know? Uh, so l let me, I want to hear Danny's thoughts because he's a fairly masculine guy. He's got kids, he's got a business. He's, he's a little puffy. <laughs> You're looking pretty good, bro. You're looking lean. You're looking lean. Put on some muscle, dude. You're gonna be like Matthew McConaughey, yeah. Was it good? You could eat. How did you feel? Sometimes when I eat a lot of sugar, I don't really feel anything. Oh shit! You good? I felt terrible, dude. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely terrible. Um. After both incidences, right? Like you can feel it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when you eat healthy, you start to feel things more. Like when you introduce stuff that your body doesn't like. Like I don't like uh, dairy, right? I could eat it; it make me uncomfortable, but it's not necessary that I like to eat it. You know, it's like do I like milk. No, I really don't. I didn't really grow up with milk and cheese. I just kind of adopted it, so I took it out of my diet. Okay, technical difficulties. Cool. Well, I could keep talking. So we're back. Feb uh, today's Monday, and we're talking about masculinity. And the reason why I thought this was a good topic was just because um, <clears throat> of all the information that's out on social media. I think that's one of the big things that confuses a lot of people in like uh, masculine. And I think for me, I think the masculinity is embodied. You know, if you have strong beliefs and strong core values and stuff, to me, that is the embodiment of your core values. And if you hold strong to that, you know, no matter what happens with 
like uh, social media, what happens with the news, with politics and everything. You stay strong. Yeah. Or we could just restart it when we do that one. We figured out, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah, I think we just restarted then. Oh, that's annoying. So nine. <sighs> All right. Let's try this again, dude. All right. We are recording. I guess we'll take it from the top. I can make it quick. Yeah. Or what? Yeah. Do you want to restart it so it's easier for you to edit or you're going to have to cut it? I think I did, right? Like, at least it shows that it's recording. It is recording, but it says, like, it's at 8 minutes 36. So you'll just have to edit that first part, I think. Okay. Then we should – maybe it's still recording in the same episode. That'd be tight. So it's just – I'll just chop it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, If you want. want. Chop it out or you just have to edit it. (coughs) Okay, we'll figure it out one way or the other. All right, you so you want to just pick back up from the start of masculinity, and with the so our topic today, are you like? I mean, I can get it from where you talked. So, okay, uh, yeah. So we were talking about masculinity. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties. So if this is not a perfect slice, it's not a perfect slice. This is the beauties of being a, a DIY or podcaster. Yeah. You know, dynamo here of figuring it the fuck out in the process. I just so, figured out the studio set up with the lighting and the mic. It's, it's been episode nine, so we're just figuring it out. That's really good. <laughs> I know. I know. Like it, yeah, we're nowhere near knowing exactly what we're doing at all. So, but uh, cool. All right. We're back. We're back. We're live. We're recording. We may be recording on a new thing that I have to place, or we're recording on the same one that I just need to chop. But one way or the other, we're started. So. That's masculinity um, is the topic of discussion. We we're just getting into it. So, you know, Sam Nang was commenting about how I'm such a, you know, masculine guy here. And uh... yeah, what a stud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, these old pipe cleaners, man. All right. But now let's go into it, man. So masculinity, I, I know it's an important thing for me in my life, um, especially with three boys. But you think you started diving into it on your end. So let's let's pick back up with you. I didn't realize you had three boys at that. Uh, so you had three boys. Do you have any girls? Man, three boys. Yeah. Three so you, boys. Yeah, you, you got to be a good example of what it is to be a strong masculine man, you know? Facts. Facts. Right. Real facts. Real facts. Real facts. Yeah. I have two daughters. Uh, you know, it's different. I'm a I'm a girl. I don't have boys and anything, but I have nephews uh, as well too. So, uh, masculinity to me is just just being an example of it. It's not. Uh, I have to show that I'm a masculine person and overpower people. It, it's it's to me masculine is being authentically you right and leading by example masculine men i believe have to do very hard stuff and that's kind of that's what builds masculinity um the idea of uh, easy life to me wasn't uh appealing because it, it it to me it just doesn't seem like i would grow if it wasn't hard if it wasn't outside my comfort zone every day right so I, 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 over time, I built up this, um, like warrior mindset and it, it, it flows into like my core values. If you see my coaching website, it's courage and discipline. Courage and discipline is actually the, the, the values of a warrior, right? Courage, like any man has to, like, if they wake up and they fear what they're doing every day and they have the courage to do it, you're building that muscle. Like, I don't want to go to the gym and do legs. I don't want to do this podcast. I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to write this book. I don't want to write this program. Every day I have to do things that I don't, you know, I'm scared of every day. And that builds the courage muscle. And the discipline is what holds everything, you know, together or like keeps keeps it going when it gets hard, right? Because I think masculine men don't stop. They, they should just continue on growing and growing and growing and growing and discipline is, you know, how, how you carry it. I think having set core values that you think about and, you know, use your whole life around, I think that's important for 
masculine men so they don't get steered away from uh trends that's the that's the that's what i think is starting to happen is things become trendy and you start to lose that traditional masculine uh values but yeah so that's that's a little you know what my my thoughts are with like having core values and uh embodying masculinity yeah no man i i, I appreciate that i and i think uh you know, that courage piece is so true. And um, I think I've, I saw somebody, maybe it was Hormozy that posted this one that I absolutely love. That was like, when you're in the moment and like, it, it's all like on like fake it till you make it, which I absolutely hate that. I hate it, dude. I, I hate it, man. I so cliche. I'm like, dude, stop saying that. <laughs> and it's like, for me, it's like, I've heard it for in my life and like believed it and tried it. And it doesn't work, right? And the other thing that's interesting about fake it till you make it is once you, you're actually still like in your fake it time, you're actually just doing it. Like that's, you're, uh, you're actually uh, doing it. Imposter syndrome. That's why we have it. <coughs> it's because yep. we listen to that advice. It's like fake it till you make it. They're like fake it till you like you are it, like be it. <laughs> and the imposter syndrome is like, that's the part of the growth, right? Like it's like, if you have an imposter syndrome, meaning that like, you know, you feel like you don't belong and you're like being fake in the process. You're not, you're just early in the process and you're actually there figuring it out. Right. So, but that's the courage, right. And like all of that comes back down to courage, which I absolutely love. And, um, there's so many places around my life, you know, from leaving a job, you know, an executive level paying job, mortgage kids, you know, third kid on the way. Yeah. I mean, my wife was, yeah, my wife was pregnant. You know, we were what six months, so like five, six months pregnant when I quit my job. Um, and it's like, well, what are we gonna do? I mean, I remember, dude, we like we didn't have insurance, right? Like none of that. And here I have a pregnant wife. Some people call me irresponsible, but it was actually I just had the courage that I could go and figure it out in the process. So. We looked around, we found a midwife that could do the birth, paid for it out of pocket and figured, you know, and then figured out how to make all that happen. So yeah. I had the baby, yeah. right? Like she's healthy, baby's healthy. Like we had an amazing birth experience. Um, so, you know, all that fear that people instill with you when you're making the decision, that's the thing that you have to learn how to tune out. Um, and from a masculine perspective, right? That's where, at least for me, that courage piece is even if you don't, even if you feel like so scared, like this is one of my like, kind of favorite things that I heard that I like. Even if you feel so scared that you feel like you need to fake courage in that moment, then fake courage because that yeah. faking of courage actually is you being courageous. I like that. I like that. That is, that yeah. is courage. And that yeah. is feel really real when, when you're doing that too, dude, like, I mean, it, it takes a lot of courage to do what you do, you know, entrepreneurship and being a masculine man. I think it's, it's, that's, that's something that you should do. It builds that muscle for me is like, uh, I, the biggest influence on my, in my life is, is my dad. Uh, you know, some of the audience members, <coughs> I'm Cambodian American, so they say I'm Cambodian right. first and then American, uh, because that's my roots. Uh, so understanding your family <clears throat> values, you know, what are good values and what are bad values? I think in masculine men, like men don't have great relationships with their father. I have a great relationship with my father and he's, he's literally my hero. Right. Um, and I still seek guidance and seek insight from him. He's the one that's kind of helped me reach to this level of like, uh, peacefulness, like enlightenment, but, um, uh, having other strong men around you, right, will teach you how to be strong men. And uh, me being Cambodian American, I'm not sure if the audience remember, I'm Cambodian American, but there's, there was a genocide that happened in Cambodia, and our family was refugees. And the reason why my family is here in America, I, it's, it's because of my dad because of how courageous my dad was during the refugee camp. So we were refugees from like uh, Cambodia 
And I was actually born in a refugee camp. How, how, I was going to say, how old were you when all this was going down? Uh, I wasn't born yet, but I can tell you the, the story. This is actually a very important story to kind of like my, my, my backstory and kind of like how, who I am. Yes. But so in, we were refugees in Cambodia and we were living in a, a refugee camp in Thailand called uh, Kawadang. Uh, so actually a lot of our family members and close friends are from that, that camp. Kawadang is a very famous refugee camp. So we, we, uh, my family was living there illegally. Like, so you, if you ever, anybody talks to my dad, he has stories of him, like getting put in jail, almost getting like killed daily, like running and stealing for food. And he has some really good stories. So that's, that's why a lot of people come to like, uh, come visit him. Cause he tells really good stories. Um, uh, should get him on the podcast one day, but, uh, um, yeah, dude, we should so this story, this story, he tells it really great. So we're in the refugee camp and my mom's pregnant with me. So the, the officials or whatever of the refugee camp announced that, um, anybody that was living in the refugee camp was, uh, that was living there illegally, uh, you were able to get a registration and legalize and live in that refugee camp. So it was a big day for that, for everybody in that, that area, that group. So that basically meant that. We, we didn't have to run for our lives. <laughs> Dude, let me just highlight something real quick just because for myself and the audience that's listening. So just compare, quick compare and contrast to your dad. Here I am in my four-bedroom house in Palm yeah. Harbor, Florida, scared that I'm going to lose my executive salary and like uh, what am I going to do with my life and my wife is pregnant and can I figure this out? Like, oh, I got the whole world stacked against me. And then there's your dad in a refugee camp, literally fighting for his life with a pregnant wife yeah. and just found out that like, Hey, we don't have to run because we're not going to get killed. Like anybody that's like, like, dude, when you tell that's so inspiring, like, do you want to talk about like first world fucking problems that we deal with here in America and all of us? So this is like the perfect segue into our topic, but yeah. Keep yeah. going, man. I just want to highlight your dad's a badass. He's a bad yeah, motherfucker, he's, dude. He's a bad dude. I, everybody. In I've never met your dad, obviously, but just that <laughs> alone, I have the uh, utmost respect. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> the story is very interesting. It gets, it, so the day they announced, the officials announced it, and then my mom's pregnant, and they're they're I guess they're in line uh, to get the registration done, and then she actually goes into labor with me. So they push her to the front. Yeah. And I think the only person that goes with her is my grandma. So it's like, and then they give uh, birth to me and I'm the only guy, I, I think the only baby that was born that day. Holy and shit. yeah, it was like that same day. And my dad was like, uh, so my name means Sam Nang. It means lucky in Cambodian, right? So it was like, when my dad tells me that story, man, I feel so inspired and feel like, uh, like I have something to do, right? Almost like when my dad tells a story to all his friends, it's like, hey, my son's like the chosen one or something, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> so it's it's very, uh, to me, like when he tells me the story, it feels like a legendary story. So he said, my name is Sam Nang, and also that I was born on a full moon as well, too. And like the Eastern culture, like the full moon means a lot. It, even in the spiritual world, the full moon means a lot. I can't really like describe what it is. I'm still kind of learning in that, that spiritual side, but the moon has something to do with like some spiritual everything. And I'm trying to figure it out, uh, Danny. <laughs> uh, hey man, I was just in Miami and the guy that I was, one of my clients is down there. And he was like, well, you guys should have a good time walking around South Beach because it's not a full moon and all the crazies aren't out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the spirituals probably come on the, the full moon. But, but yeah, at the end of the story, like, that's wild, man. That, that story is wild. My dad can tell it really good. <clears throat> Just having that behind like my back and like my mothers to teach me like family values. Uh, everybody in my family, like strong men, you know, very, we're traditional. And we're also learning how to be more vulnerable and express ourselves as well, too, because that's something that, like, I think strong men should work on their weaknesses. We shouldn't avoid uh, weaknesses, um, expressions of emotions and uh, being vulnerable, telling people how you feel is 
to me is a very <laughs> massive because it takes the courage to put yourself out there. You know, I think a lot of yeah. men, even even females as well too, they don't have the courage to put this their their message out there, even though their message could help somebody else. You know, why have the courage to say the message so it helps other people out? And that's kind of like the reason why I've been uh, getting coaching clients is because when I say my message, it's because I'm speaking to resonate, I'm speaking from what I heard from other people that they're, you know, they're struggling with. And so I'm sharing my insight on what I'm, I'm here as well too. But yeah, yeah man. And that's, I mean, that's, that's, I can see you got like a, it's, it's like a legacy you got to live up to, right? Like, yeah. and it's definitely inspiring. Cause it's like, man, if my dad did that, and I've, I mean, I, my story, my father, I had a very strong father figure as well. I was very close with my dad. Um, he's passed, yeah. but he, um, you know, he's got, his story is, you know, his parents came straight off the boat, one from Poland, one from Italy. So my dad was first generation immigrant or second gen generation immigrants. Um, <clears throat> and he grew up in like the slums of Jersey City. Yeah. His father was a postman. Um, and didn't make much money. And, you know, his mother was stay at home. Um, and, you know, he, they struggled, they grew up poor. And my dad was smart. Like at my dad at 16, my dad was making rocket fuel in his basement. Wow. I ended up like catching his basement on fire at one point in the middle of Jersey <laughs> city, because he's a 16 year old making jet fuel, um, on his own. <clears throat> but, um, he ended up get, going up and he became a master. He got his master's in physics, went into the air force, became a colonel transitioned into corporate America, um, became an executive for Verizon. And then like his kind of claim to fame was he closed the $1.2 billion deal between Verizon and Boeing that got Wi-Fi on planes. Okay. So like, that's him. Um, that's him. He was the one that pitched it and won the deal. So like, you know, he went from nothing in slums, Jersey city, all the way up to, you know, at one point he owned technically four different residences. Right. Um, and that's when like I started, I came into the picture. I was a, my mom would say I was a blessing from God. I was a mistake. Right. <laughs> so my sisters are 12 and 13 years older than me. I was supposed, was to, a good be time. I was supposed to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I grew up in a very privileged, like standard white privileged life. Right. Like, um, but my dad, used to always instill values of masculinity into me. Yeah. Um, and he expected a lot from me on that end. Right. And um, our, we had five core values, five core guiding principles growing up that my dad used to drill into our heads. Yeah. And it was faith, love, trust, compassion, and integrity. And all of those, like, I, I remember those as a young, young boy, being told, you know, to, to kind of go into um, with everything that I do to live through that. And he lived through that himself. And uh, <clears throat> I was never like one to follow in my parents' footsteps. Like they, they had their vision of like, go to college, get the wife, get the job, get the house, have the kids. Yeah. Your classic American dream. And I was like, why do I need all this? I don't want this. I'm going to do, I'm going to go snowboard. Um, and that was really hard on my family until literally until like a couple months before my dad died. And I was like, just starting to get into this digital marketing thing. This is before I got like my big wins in government contracting or anything. And I was explaining to him what I'm going to do. And I was like, dad, like I'm on the path. Like I'm going to be just fine. Like my family's probably going to make more money than my entire family combined. Like right. we're on a track like this. And that was the first time my dad like fully had conviction in me and believed in me. I'll never forget that we were in a grocery store. And, um, and then he died a couple months later. Right. And it was like, now I got to fulfill on this. Um, yeah. and, but it's, uh, it takes that courage and, and that, that masculinity side of it, you know, and I think there's a lot of things in like the news, right. And I mean, especially in like pop culture and all sorts of things, you know, toxic masculinity and yeah. all this stuff. Right. And there's a lot of like polar po uh, polarization going on. You have like the Andrew Tates, like the, the Tates of the world, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate that are like preaching masculinity back into young men. 
you have the haters that are going to hate on their story. Like I, I posted something from them yeah. that I just thought was a good quote, like never mind their backstory and everything else, but just, I thought it was like a good message. And I had people DMing me being like, you yeah. shouldn't share their stuff. They're this, they're that. And like, I'm the same too. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so they, maybe they are right. <clears throat> uh, so the message still resonates um, and still something we need to hear. And I think that one of the things that I totally agree with and like having a wife is in a traditional partnership of like man and woman. And, and I think even really like in really any relationship you have the, the polar, the polarization within the relationship of femininity and masculinity. Right. And whether that's what, regardless of what you want to use it for a pronoun or whatever, all that other bullshit, we don't have to go into that, but like, regardless of what you want to use there, there is a typically a feminine component and a masculine component. And as one grows, the other grows, but they grow in tandem, right? So the more masculine your one side is, the more fem feminine, the other side is free to be right. And the more feminine one side becomes the easier it is to become more masculine and the stronger the relationship grows. And, um, I've seen it with my wife, right? Like if I look back, if I rewind to a little over a year ago, maybe, or, or actually more like almost two years is crazy, but like I was drinking, like if I go back to December of 2022, right. I was drinking like a fucking fish. Like <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Okay. I measured, I measured it out, dude. And before I even had dinner, cause I would drink two martinis two vodka martinis before dinner. And finally, one day I like actually measured how many like shots I'm consuming. It was sickening. It was 12 shots, six shots per martini that I would drink before I even had dinner. And it was like, and I could function. So yeah. long story short on that, like I was drinking heavily. I was making Probably excuses. So high me. functioning now. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like... You were I'm like, oh my god! I, I'm like sober. I can do things now. I'm not like permanently fucking intoxicated. Yeah. So like, if I was able to do all that, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you were telling yeah, me. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man, like that. If that moment, I was, I was probably more feminine than, and like my masculinity was probably like at an all time low. Right. Even though I was this executive, and even though I felt like I was making an impact, I, I had confidence issues. And like, I realized I had like a lot of social anxiety yeah. um, and I had a lot of stress and I relied on alcohol to yeah. cope with that. And, you know, I think that there's something to be said, like anytime that you have issues and you have to rely on something, anything that's not you, right? Yeah. Um, in my experience, <clears throat> it lowered my masculinity and my wife had to step up and do more. Yeah. And thus she had a resentment towards me. Yep. Yep. And like we were we weren't in like a you know bad situation like a divorce, but we were in a situation where she was like, I don't know how long I could go on, like if Danny continues to drink like this. And rightfully so, I wouldn't have stayed with me, you know, for the rest of my life if I drank myself into the grave, you know, like it would have been terrible. So it took a lot of change. And as I started to cut back on drinking and I had clarity, I realized like things that I need to step up to as a man. And some of those things were as simple as laying with my sons yeah, and helping them fall asleep at night. There's a masculine trait to that, right? It's not just coddling a baby. It's laying with my boys and like giving them the peace of mind that they're safe. Cause you know, daddy, the protector is there letting them help go to bed as opposed to, you know, mommy, who's, you know, more of like the nurturing type. Yeah. So it's uh, all sorts of little things like that, man, that like came out of it. Um, but yes, you know, it's, I think it's a, an important part to all, for all walks of life, whether you have kids, whether you don't have kids, whether you're in a relationship, even if you're, <clears throat> you know, like whatever gender you identify. I mean, I think that there's always going to be a masculine and feminine component to every single relationship. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. Uh, I think when I was going through my divorce and like separation and everything, and a lot of the reason when we talk about like, uh, I, we were talking about uh, universal laws. There is a law uh, in her, the hermetic uh, principles that's called the law of gender. 
So what you're saying is an actual law. It's like why male and female are attracted to each other because we're polar opposites, just like magnets and stuff. So once you're starting to get into like relationships where the man is a little bit more feminine and the female is starting to rely more and they start to build their testosterone level and gets off balance, that's when we start to get uh, like attraction, start to like push away from each other. So it's it's a real, I believe it's a real thing. Uh, and after like, <coughs> about it, like going to like when you go to like divorce and separation, you read all the, the relationship books. You're like a relationship expert after like a, a divorce if if you work on personal development. But yeah, the law of gender, male and female. Like yes, masculinity. You are a man, but you do have to have that small percentage of that feminine side as well too, right? It doesn't make you mean you're a a, a female makes you human right because you cannot be completely all masculine if my message was all masculine uh there would be no heart behind it right so there's got to be a balance of it as well too and it's the same in the females as well too there's a feminine energy and then there's a masculine energy that they could tap into if they were all feminine they would they would they wouldn't be doing anything you know they wouldn't have goals they wouldn't have ambition that small testosterone that's what it is and stuff so it could be in both genders i i, I believe so if you're if a, a in a relationship where a man is masculine and he's in the masculine frame and the female stays in a feminine frame and the feminine frame is to exude love to show appreciation and kindness and everything the guy or the masculine frame is protector uh servant leader um you know all the all the masculine stuff that we talk about and you know we tried to set a, a good example and i think for me that's that's one of the big things is just trying to be a good example right i have daughters I have two daughters, so I don't have any sons, but the example is that, uh, you know, my wife, my first wife, Whitney told me, she said, you know, you're the, the example, the standard for a man that she holds for in her future relationships and stuff. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I'm divorced, I still treat <clears throat> my mom with respect. Uh, I treat them with respect as well too, because now they know what it means to be respected as well too, as a Offended. Dude, that's so important. That's so important. I mean, and you even talk to like my buddies, you know, in late thirties or later thirties, right? And dating and going through that phase still. And you know, that's a real thing about women and daddy issues, right? Like they uh they make some poor decisions. Um, you know, maybe not all of them. I'm sure there's, you know, they're always the exception to the rule, but that's definitely like if you have daddy issues, it's you typically make bad decisions in guys. And at least from what I've seen, too, you know, and I think that that's so important that you set that example, right, of what it does be like, you know, because all the all little girls look up to their dad. <clears throat> so understanding like, oh, this is dad's a good man. This is what he does. Like, that's the definition, right? Like you're almost giving them their future definition yeah, yeah. of what to look for, right? And uh, that's so important, man. I think that a lot of dads should probably hear that and understand that, especially girl dads, because yeah. I've seen a lot that don't do that too, which is, a, it's like, it's heartbreaking to me. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, you know, set the example. I think, uh, you know, when you do the therapy and stuff, when you go to separation and divorce, of course, you're going to hate that person. Of course, you're going to be angry at the person. It's a real feeling, right? It's part of the grieving process but if you do the process and do the therapy and the shadow work and everything the hate the anger will subside right and that's where you want to get to you want to get to where you get insight if you're starting to feel anger and hate uh for somebody if, if it's in the relationship and that, this is important too you know talking about divorce and relationships separation because this is where it's a good time for men to really find themselves and build that masculine frame, build that masculine <coughs> stuff. When you are in solitude, right? Uh, I'm in. I'm, I'm not lonely or anything, but I'm in solitude. You know, I enjoy my peace. I enjoy uh, my time alone of uh, meditation and working out and stuff. This is where it's a great time to find and develop and establish core values and stuff, and how you want to be 
uh, perceived by your kids. You know, your kids is is your legacy. And, you know, there's things that I do that I'm, I, I beat myself up about, you know, you feel guilty for being a parent and everything. But at the end of the day, it's like the big, biggest things when we have parent issues is, is learning how to forgive them. You know, it's, right. it's learning how to forgive your parents. Uh, your parents at the end of the day, they might have done some fucked up shit because they don't have podcasts. They don't have personal development books. They don't have uh, YouTube. They don't have what we have. So they're probably limited to their personal growth and therapy <clears throat> to what they're limited to. Um, so starting from like a place of understanding and then also, yes, hate what they hate, you know, they did to you. But also understand that your parents also gave you some good stuff too. They gave you some good traits. You know, if 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 they gave you bad traits, they also gave you good traits as well too. So 100%. you gotta be you gotta be grateful for both uh, as well, and then you gotta make peace with it. That's one of the biggest things where like I start to see people struggle is the relationships with their their parents. Um, men are men, and you know, dads are dads as much as we try to be our best. We're also limited in certain areas and we have blind spots. That's, that's me being vulnerable. I have blind spots and I try to cover or work on them constantly, not covering them up, but like work on them. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent, man. Like, and that's like all of us do, right. I do as well. And <clears throat> that's why it's so good to have like people in your corner that inherently want to see you win. And I think that that's something that can kind of help shed some light you know, when I was going through my uh, my drinking spurt back in like what I like that example I was telling you in, in uh, December of 2020 or 2022, one of my best friends um, and probably one of my like he's definitely my closest friend. And like I've I, I have a couple close guy friends that I still keep in touch with. But as you get older, you know, like your friend group gets smaller and smaller um, and then people start to fade out too, like the ones that you yeah. think want you to win. And then you start doing something and then they're trying to like pull you back and like, and they don't necessarily do it intentionally or with bad will. It's just more of like, it's just in their nature. It's human nature. Like, you yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, that's not, that's not how we do this. Like, no, no, no. Like I'm doing this now. Right. But anyways, like my one buddy that's like, just inherently wants me to win, you know, he's the one who came up to me and was like, Hey man, I just want you to know, like you're, you look terrible. And like, this is not right. This is not healthy. And in my mind up until that point, like I knew that I needed to cut back on drinking and I, you know, admitted that I had a drinking problem, but I didn't really, really like, I never like got into trouble with yeah. drinking <clears throat> aside from like getting in trouble with my wife. So yeah. like, I was like, yeah, like, yeah, I got to drink it. Well, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Everybody's an alcoholic. Like, but I'm going to continue to have my drinks. I don't really have like a big problem. He's the one that came to me and was like, you have a problem. And that kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. And then I also, you know, something as simple as like going back to the kids and setting an example, I'll never forget like sitting there and my oldest son, he was like four or three at the time. And he used to walk around and pretend he was drinking a beer. He called every all alcohol beer. Wow. And he was like, I'm having a beer like daddy. And I remember just being like, ah, ha, ha, look at my boy, you know, like right. <clears throat> almost embraced it. And my wife was always mortified. And I just thought it was funny. And like, if the boys were around, it was like this, like fake, it was, it was very fake for me of like, oh yeah, like, look at the boy, like following after his old man. And then fast forward, I quit drinking, I started working out. And then now all of a sudden, my same five, now he's four or five a year later, and he's pretending to be working out. Yeah, he's doing that. It's different. And I'm like, I'm like, holy crap, like, wow, that was like, my influence was like, my influence yeah. was so strong of this terrible bad habit that I used to think was just like, okay. And I used to rationalize for myself, but it really wasn't okay. It was terrible. And, um, it's you know, good. like, so like, to me, it's like when, 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 like I flex and stuff, and it gives other people the permission to flex and stuff. Like my nieces and nephew, they know I like flexing, and like they, they're strong. They're naturally gonna want to work out because they're seeing the whole family and stuff. Like when you incorporate, you know, masculine men should be the leaders. I, I, 
I, I strongly believe, and people could disagree that you, to be a full masculine man, you do have to be physically capable, right? Physically capable. 100%. Yeah, if you want to be a, a stoic, a person that can handle emotional uh, <clears throat> trauma or like waves and stuff, it, it, you have to learn how to master the physical part of yourself as well too, because mastering the physical part is mastering your emotions. And that is a very masculine trait. You know, when you have men that are overly angry, overly emotional, which is okay to feel it, but you don't act need to act necessarily act on it. That's why we have stoicism. That's why we have Buddhism. That's why we have philosophies and stuff is so that in order when you do have hard times, you know, eventually and any, every man, uh, if, if they're on the path, are going to go through some hard stuff, they're going to go through uh, a traumatic life event, you know, no matter who you are, you can't get through life without something traumatic happening it is that you, you have to be somewhat prepared for it. And most, most men now aren't prepared for it. So that's why you're starting to see, I believe a lot of mental health issues. Uh, I've had some mental health issues, but I prepared and I did the work. So that's kind of like why I coach and stuff is if people aren't prepared, if people need support on this end and it's hard for people to ask for support as well too, you know, that's, that's and I, for men. And I think it's like, you know, and, and going to on that thread now, right. And like, how do you understand if you're masculine, not masculine, if you need to work on it, if you don't need to work on it, where it plays a part in your role and everything else. So like, first thing I would say is like, tune out all mainstream media, right? Like just get rid of it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the, the narratives that are put into place and things of that nature. It's just, there's a lot of like, honestly, ironically toxicity around it. And it's these narratives often are trying to pull you into a, a line of thought beyond what the topic is. And that's true for all sorts of different walks of life, right? All sorts of different topics. It's just the way that it goes because at the end of the day, I'm I'm in the marketing place, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I know how to market. So if I can get a group of individuals to regularly talk about something, doesn't matter what it is, regularly talk about something over and over and over and over and over again, I can control that group of people, especially if I can control the topics. So in controversy and things that are controversial, that causes conflict and causes debates and causes arguments, if I can control what they're arguing about, my God, I have so much control over a group of people. Yeah. So the first step of this, in my opinion, is just tune that crap out. And then this is where you need to formulate your own opinion and have your own yeah. self beliefs yeah. around certain things. And that's a deep dive inward, right? And for me, I had to really look deep inside of myself. And I had to have the hard, the hard conversation with myself. You know, I literally like physically was in front of the mirror talking to myself, looking at my body. You know, I like I grew like, you know, man tits. Right. I had a belly. My face was swollen. <clears throat> like I was 180 pounds. I've only I've only ever been 150 pounds, 155 pounds since I hit puberty. And here I am at 180 pound man. Like my back, like I'm totally like not athletic. My back has been crushing me. Like I'm still having back issues that I'm recovering from because now my body's like able to stand erect. All this stuff, right? And I had to like really look deep down inside to realize a couple truths about myself, which was one, I'm nowhere near the man that I want to be, right? And nowhere near where I believe I, I am capable of. And that's and this is a very big different differentiation that I also realize. I know what I'm capable of, so I'm going to start to work towards that. But I don't deserve a single thing. And this is like probably one of the most critical points that I realized was this isn't about deserving. Like I like you know I for a while I had this mindset like this i i drank the entitlement juice for a little bit right mm -hmm. where it was like oh i'm a i'm an executive i'm a chief growth officer i'm a chief marketing officer <laughs> <clears throat> i deserve to fly first class i deserve to you yeah. know have all the money and the opportunities come to me and all this other stuff i deserve a big house like that's who that's what i am no i didn't man i didn't deserve shit and like that's something that I had to realize that I was like, I wasn't entitled to a single thing in this world. And there's, I'm not deserving of anything unless I already had it. Yeah. Right. 
like I'm deserving of being a father of three. Why? Because I have a family of three boys. That's why I deserve it. I don't deserve it because I'm, it's a future thing. I deserve it because I have it. Yeah, you got it. And that's when I realized like, okay, if I'm going to make myself a better human being, a better man, if I'm going to make this business work on my own, if I am going to go get you know, a million dollar valuation of a business, if I'm going to go get wealth that I want, if I'm going to go get a life that I want, I have to create it. I don't deserve it. And no one's going to give it to me. And it doesn't matter what my title is. It doesn't matter where I came from, what I look like, any of that shit. None of that shit matters. The only thing that matters is, is what I'm doing today and what I'm doing in that moment and how I'm moving the needle for myself. And every day, I focus in on moving the needle for myself until finally I started understanding, like I was able to make a direct correlation with becoming a better human being, becoming a better man, taking care of my shit and ultimately taking myself and my family to the next level and growing. Right. And I, you know, I think that that was a big pivotal moment for me in my masculine journey of realizing and accepting that I was not a masculine man at the time no matter what my ego told me and no matter how I felt on the outside and what my friends group friend group would like, look at me. Cause I've always had this like loud spoken alpha mentality. I've always had it. And like, I've always been the rebel. I've always challenged things. I've always spoke my mind <clears throat> and that can create a facade often to yeah. who I really am. Right. And I kind of let that happen around me in that space until finally I pulled it all back. And I was like, wait a second. I'm just another like human being that's out there trying to figure his shit out. And I don't deserve this shit. Like I don't deserve anything in my life. I am. I need to go become a better human being. Like I, and realize I need to bring a lot of value to this world. Yeah. The more value I bring, the more things will start to come. And it's not about deserving things. It's about earning things and growing into things. Right. Yeah. So it was a, (laughs) <laughs> that's it yeah i mean it's I, I you know i think a lot of people out there you know dude if you want to see like it's funny man so my buddy that i went with to dave and busters we went to dave and busters last night because like i said it was rainy we didn't know what to do with the kids so we went to dave and busters it's a sunday night it's a rainy sunday night in florida the place was packed i mean like shoulder to shoulder packed you had to wait to get on every ride dave and busters. And my buddy that i was with um He's a self-made man, just sold one of his businesses. And like, he went up to the bar to order a burger, a burger and a water. He also doesn't really drink that much. And he saw this dude walk up, ordered four shots of Cuervo for himself, already shit faced. And like, went back and like party with the boys. And he came to me after that. And he was like, dude, could you imagine if like the epitome of your week is going to Dave and Buster's and getting drunk? Like if that was it for you? <laughs> I was like, man, that's sad. And like, I think so many, pe- so many times, like I, that really hit home for me. Like when I think about like my own life and what I prioritized and why I prioritized it and why I thought that that was like a piece of success. Yeah. Um, and in that moment it felt like success, but it wasn't. And you see it all the time everywhere, man. Of like these people that either have a false sense of masculinity, um, where they're, they're kind of projecting it onto themselves <clears throat> or you see it where like they, they almost overcompensate for it and to, to mask their insecurities. And, um, I don't know, man, like, I, I think it's a, it's an interesting topic that all of us need to, especially men and fathers probably need to take, like, it's never ending. Like you keep never looking ending. inward. It is like, never I mean, growth is never ending, so it's never really any spot. <coughs> you know, I, I think um, I did. Think, I, I did want to interrupt you, but you were you were so good in, in your story. But uh, you having like a friend tell you, like you, you say, your most honest friend told you that you had a drinking problem. And when I started breaking away from like my social group as well, too, I told a lot of my friends, like, "Hey, look, I'm getting ready to." to go on this journey. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know it was a spiritual journey, but I was getting ready to break off and just start doing my own thing. But I, I've said, I've said that to like many, many of my friends that had like drinking problems and 
I told them and I, I want them to be better. Right. But the thing is like, I couldn't hang out with them anymore. I had to like step away and continue on with the past. That's a big struggle for like, uh, men or is, is that like, I, I talk about drinking and not drinking as in like the alcohol itself. Like if, if a lot of majority of people don't drink by themselves, they drink social right social right social drinking is a lot of pressure even i knew that it was like uh, all my friends are and the buddies are hanging out but i really want to study i need to study or i need to work out i need to go to sleep so i could get rest for my my workout and stuff but all your friends are out drinking and you know uh having fun right that's 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 where it's really a big struggle is stepping away from that and the alcohol itself it's like okay once that social pressure is gone, the alcohol uh, makes it easier to not drink alcohol. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's a great story. Your story is inspiring as well too. With like, uh, you know, how much introspective and reflection that you've had as a a man that you felt feminine versus now you feel more masculine in the masculine frame as well too. And all like I felt it as well too during uh my separation divorce i felt ashamed of myself i felt like i i didn't provide i didn't do what i needed to do for my family and stuff so that put me in a very like off balance like uh like i wasn't balanced you know for me mm -hmm. being in the masculine frame even though like now it's like i'm physically fit i do physically hard things i do uh you know, work on business, I'm on sales, I'm putting myself out there. So more in the masculine frame, but I also have to have that small feminine with my, my daughters and everything. And, you know, with the, with this message and stuff. So, uh, having a good balance and reflection, I think is, uh, for men it is important time for solitude, um, doing things that, are solely yours so you could provide and be the best for your family i think that's very uh, a strong masculine trait so for me all i'm doing now is even though i'm not married it's like if eventually if i do get married and stuff i'm gonna be this very masculine established person that has financial stability that can provide that has emotional control so i want to be the strong leader for my family even if I'm not in a relationship right now, it's like, I'm thinking ahead. So anybody that's like, if you're separated or divorced or like in between relationship, the best time to build masculinity is in solitude, work out, journal, meditate, <clears throat> be around other strong people to get influence. Right. And that's why you, you, when you say like, when you drink alcohol, you can't see the level of you stay in a low vibrational state and you can't get out of it. Your friend saw it from you because he was in a higher vibrational state. He probably quit. Right. You. I was like, hey, I could see better for you. You know, if you have friends right. that tell you that kind of stuff, they're real friends. The real friends are the ones that say, oh, he's depressed. He, oh, like I had, I had a great friend and he had a drinking problem. And I told him and all his friends were like, no, he's depressed. You're just for me it's like you're just egging it on and just letting him be that because that that you know a good friend will say hey you have a drinking problem you need to fix it and if you don't fix it i can't be your friend right so that's hard for people to say right I've done that to some friends where like hey i can't be your friends if you continue this behavior <coughs> I, cannot, I cannot be responsible or like have that level of guilt like if something was to happen you know so sometimes making peace with like people uh that that's a hard aspect is giving up like, and i got i got a I, like on that note i got a good exercise for any of you guys listening that want to understand if your friends like where they will kind of lie on the spectrum like are they true real friends that want to see you win that are willing to grow versus like they're maybe they're not your real friends right and something that i learned right is you have to pick some pick something it could be anything for me it was biking okay um, it was hopping up on my bike and biking every single day. That was my activity that I chose. Um, and I chose it really because I wanted to do it. There was no other reason why I didn't do it because I was trying to test something. It was something inherently that I wanted to do. I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to do over a thousand miles in a month. So what I did was, is I just basically turned to my friend group and I was like, Hey, 
I'm going to bike every single day. I'm going to bike 30 miles. If you guys want to come, you can. Yeah. And like, I'll figure it out in my trip because I'm going 30 miles. So I have time and like distance. So if you're across, you know, 10 miles away, I'll just plan on my trip. I'll swing by. I'll pick you up. You can hop on the ride. You know, we'll figure it out. Right. So like, and I would plan all my trips around that. But what's interesting is, is you, you'll see like the ones that are like, oh yeah, I'll bike with you, dude. That'd be sick. Yeah. And you're like, cool. Here I am. Want to bike? And they're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's interesting because like if when I took that place, right, when I was like, this is what I'm doing. In other words, like it wasn't like I'm like, do you want to do this with me? It was no, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. If you you have an open invitation, but I'm going to go on my schedule. I'm going to go at my time. I'm going to go when I want to go. If you want to make an adjustment to come along, you're more than welcome to. But I'm going to do this. What I found is, is that. I started with like one of my buddies started biking him with him. He was like, yeah, let's do it. He'd show up at 5 a.m. <laughs> we'd both bike. And then a second buddy came along and started tagging up regularly. And then a third one came along regularly. Right. <laughs> and we spend it before you know it, we're biking with the crew and we're doing it every day. And everybody's biking at some point in my journey. Some, some would actually bike the whole 30 miles with me. Others would, you know, like come in and out for like 10 miles here, you know, whatever. And, I realized like I was the catalyst of getting that group together and biking because of my actions. And it wasn't intended to be that way. I wasn't starting some bike camp or like whatever. It was just, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. Here's your invitation. Want to come or do you not? And it's up to you. And then after the, that month, I kind of reassessed and I stopped biking. And when I stopped, everybody doesn't bike anymore. Nobody bikes from that group. And I think it's really interesting Like you see that often a lot. And like, and so a good ex like way to kind of test this for yourself and your group, if you're struggling with like, or even have the thought of like, maybe I have a toxic friend group, maybe my friend group is holding me back. Just put your hand up, pick something, anything in your life. It could be running, it could be biking, it could be, um, you know, studying, it could be reading, it could be, um, you know, learning a new skill, whatever it is, pick something that is inherently difficult that requires you to challenge yourself that is ultimately going to help you and anybody else that wants to be a part of it right and like in personal development like you probably could relate to that right of, of picking one of these little things yeah. it could be any part of your life it could be not drinking it could be um spending more time with your kids it could be any of that stuff and you can invite the group to participate in a way of like, well, let's sync up and let's talk about, you know, what we do with our kids this week, if it's spending more time with our kids, and let's just take a, a one hour block every week. Um, but anyways, pick one of those things, challenge yourself, and then vocalize it to your friend group and say, I am doing this. Yeah, I am going here. Vocalize. I'm very clear with what I want to do. And I'm going to go do this, whether you come along or not, that's your choice. But I'm going to go do this. You're more than welcome to join me. Yeah. And you'll be amazed to see how many people will peel themselves off from that. So it's not like leaving them necessarily. You're inviting the group and those that are going to want to come that are going to see the, the potential opportunity for themselves and they see your success in the process. They're going to gravitate off of that. And they're going to be those people that want to see you win. Just just genuinely want to see you win that have your back, like truly have your back. Yeah. Not the like I like if they're a part of the journey and you sell your company for a million dollars. And then they're like, Hey, you want to hook me up with a couple hundred grand? Like they're not those people. They're just like, cool, dude, you did it. Like high five, like go live your best life. Like keep going, you know, like, and those are the people you want to surround yourself with. So sometimes it just takes you to test your own friend group yeah. through your own actions and not words, but actual actions. You use your words as a vehicle to describe the action that you're taking um, and then make the invitation. Right. Um, I just found that to be really interesting when it was like assessing my friend group and seeing like who wanted to be a part of this journey and who didn't. Yeah. Um, and then I, I took it a step further cause I vocalized it on social media and then you really get insight to your real friends because you have then all of a sudden friends that you've had for a very long time might start hating on you. Yeah. Um, and telling you things that like I had it happen to me, like, oh, dude, like, I think it's cool what you're doing, but you know, maybe like tone it down, 
Right. <laughs> Wait a second. Like I, dude, I was told. <laughs> Go I, was ahead, told bro. I was straight up told to that I would probably be more successful with the stuff that I'm doing on social media if I just started drinking again and started talking about shit while I was drinking. Yeah. I, I literally was told that, and I was like, "Man, no. not what I'm doing." Yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's complete opposite. But yeah. yeah, but anyways, so that was that's kind of my my kind of take or like challenge, I guess you will, to the audience. I, I want to add on to that. That that's great that you did that, right? It takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of strength to do that. It takes a lot of like the thing is like it's leadership. That's what it is, you know. Men <clears throat> lead um, with a vision or with like some kind of purpose. And the thing is, that's what I do with Peak Performance Academy. Is like if you want to be a part of the community. You know, I'm not selling anything, but we're all getting elevated. We're all working on entrepreneurship, personal development. We're getting more spiritual and stuff. It's not like brainwashing or anything, but it's like we're all going to, like, work on this together and stuff. So if you want to join, like, join the community, and if you don't want to be a part of the community, it's like, okay, you know, not a big deal. But we're all moving in, like, a sort of direction. We're elevating and, you know stepping away from toxic groups and stuff takes a lot of like leadership. It takes a lot of balls, but the thing is it might be hard, but you're going to be very, as a man, you're going to be very respected. Um, you know, when those friends that originally might hate you and then you start to become successful and then the people that are supporting you, they're always going to, they're going to support you, right? You, you have more support than you actually believe. Like at first when I started doing this, I didn't realize like, um, uh, you don't realize that like people low key, like listen to you and expect to hear from you and everything. But then there's also the few people that don't care for it and stuff. And I don't know the exact number, right? But they're there, but there's more people out there that need to hear your message of leadership, of your vision, of like uh, your insight or your knowledge and stuff. And people are afraid to share uh, their stories because of those folks that are in those little vibrational state and it takes a lot of like courage a lot of leadership and what you're explaining like organizing groups peak performance academy and stuff communities and stuff it takes a lot of leadership and you know for anybody that wants to learn it's like just move just move just do something you know just take and i think to to pull out even more on that thread as far as leadership's concerned right like and those of you that might be thinking to yourself like oh i'm not a leader like, oh, I, I, no, 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 I, I can't lead people. I'm not a leader. I know that about myself. <clears throat> well, I would, I would air to argue that every single human being in this world has leadership qualities. Because at the end of the day, you may not be leading a group of people or an audience or a mass or whatever, but you do lead yourself. You make decisions for yourself. Every single one of us makes decisions for my three-year-old, my seven-month-old makes decisions for himself. Right. Like we all make decisions for ourselves. We all lead ourselves. And if you can, that's what I, when I say like, and which goes hand in hand with what you're saying, when I say like, make, uh, put an idea out there and say, I'm going to go do this and then send the invitation. Right. Like that's part of the leadership, but at the same time you're leading yourself. Right. Yeah. And you're bringing yourself to a new place and a new higher playing field and a new plane and a new vibration, a new frequency, whatever you want to call it you're leading yourself in that process. And, and if you can lead yourself, then you definitely have the ability to help inspire and lead others. Right. And it's not necessarily always like taking them into battle with you <clears throat> as far as a leadership's concerned. Sometimes it's just the smallest little thing of like, Hey, I did this today. Like, like you said, sharing your story, sharing a piece of it. Um, that's that it could be leadership to a Tony Robbins event. I'm going to a Tony Robbins event. Do you want to come? Yeah. Right. Like that at, in itself, like, yes, you're getting led by something else and somebody else to go consume content, but you making the action to go start it because you're trying to become a better human being. And then making that invitation is part of that leadership. Right. So even like go, people going into your academy and your community, it's the same concept. Right. Hey, I'm going to try this out at Peak Performance Academy because I want to become a better human being. Do you want to come yeah. into that journey? Um, and even though you're leading the group, 
they're going because they're on their own personal journey. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe they accelerate and then they decide that they get so inspired that they want to do something similar in their space, in their world, with their opinions. Uh, you know, like that's the beauty of it. And I think it all stems back from like, you lead yourself whether you believe it or not. You lead yourself every single day, whether you believe it or not. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. I don't care what your circumstances are. Look at your dad in Cambodia. Yeah. He led himself every single day with his pregnant wife in a fucking refugee camp during a genocide when like everybody's trying to kill, like, are you kidding me? Like, it doesn't matter the situation that you're in. You're still leading yourself. And if, as soon as you understand that and accept that, that to, that to be a, a, a fact and a truth that you can't run away from, why not pick the journey that's going to lead you to become a better human being? and help you go achieve the things that you want that you do desire and that you do want it for your life and then that's where all you have to do is open that invitation up to your friend group say i'm gonna go do this fucking coach danny i'm pumped Bro. pump <laughs> Shit, man let's go fucking get this world let's go let's get it let's get this bread <laughs> i think we're that's it, man i think that was a great topic man i think we we I don't know, we hit the nail on the head, but I think uh, I expressed what I needed to express about masculinity and stuff. And, um, you know, I hope it inspires other people as well, too, to 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 get it. You know, even as male, female, whoever, it's uh, getting it. That's, that's part of, uh, you know, everybody has a little bit of masculinity. If it's female, there's, there's that little edge of you that wants to get more. You know, males, you have a little bit more like testosterone and everything your your potential is there it's in that masculine frame and everything so to me it's like the heavy lifting the reading the studying and living a fulfilling life all adds to 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 a very uh higher masculine version of yourself you know we could talk about spiritual like you're meant to be a uh, a strong masculine person so sometimes we get afraid of like uh being masculine and being vulnerable and you know, wanting sex and stuff like that. So there's stuff that like people are ashamed of, but like, you know, men should want sex. Men should want money. Men should want to dominate or like to, to go out and, and, and crush it. It paves the way for other people as well too. So like, as like what peak performance caddy and creating community, this is still fairly new uh, platform. So we have people that are kind of paving the way, taking mastermind classes and learning how to build businesses around it. And then eventually when it gets up and running, I could teach, you know, I mean, we're teaching right now at the same time, you know, it's, we're leading, leading the way. And if anybody does want to join us, we got communities, we got podcasts, to follow, um, people that are like-minded. That's, that's the purpose of kind of like our mission and how we're tying it all together as well too. Right. A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. And that's, that's the goal here. You know, like we're, we're doing this. So be a part of it or don't. Right. Um, <laughs> that's it right there. Now I'm going to stop at episode 10. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're done. We're yeah, done. Yeah. Which actually brings like, that probably is a good point for our outro. So this is FIFO flow in flow out. Sam Ming man, uh, founder of peak performance Academy, Danny Marowinski exit built. And, you know, again, we started this podcast, just we were we knew of each other in high school hadn't talked in 20 years both share personal development type content on social media which we connected over had our first zoom meeting and literally zoom meeting number two sam name was like let's just hit record and that's why we're here today and how we started this podcast <laughs> uh episodes come out every monday at 6 a.m friday at 4 p.m so you got your inspiration for the week and the close out for the week as you enter into the weekend catch it during your commutes and next episode episode 10 we've hit double digits dude um we're rolling we're bringing on a special guest so yeah. that's our first time we will have another person why don't you invite some of the audience members to, if you guys like the the podcast topics that uh we're we're discussing topics you know before the episode and actually just just winging it so like literally like five minutes before the show, we were like, do you want to talk about this? And then he's like, yes. <laughs> but if there's anything that you guys want us to talk about or topics of discussion or want to join us on being a guest as well too, uh, I know we got like masculine energy. We do need some feminine energy on the podcast as well too. And 
anybody that's in the same growth sp uh, space as us as personal development. Uh, so we invite you to be part of that as well too. So we can make yeah, sure. like that's. I think that's a good point, man. Like I think anybody that's wanting to grow as a human being is a viable guest for this podcast, right? Like that's our ultimate message is like raising the collective vibrations through growth, right? So if you are going through growth, like we'd love to hear your story and love to have you on and hear your thoughts. You know, we don't have all the answers. We're just two dudes that barely know one another that are just going through this experience authentically. And like, we'd love to hear your experience too, you know, and hear your opinions on some of these topics. So uh, definitely drop us a note You can get them at samningman.com. Hit them up. <clears throat> you can hit me up. I'm on Think Cold on Instagram and Exit Build on my website. You can find my contact through there. But uh, but yeah, yeah, great episode, man. All right, brother. All right, brother. Well, Friday. crush it today. Yeah. Happy uh, Happy Monday, man. Oh, let's let's go hit this. From our uh, actionable items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I I got I do have an update. Um, still not where I necessarily want to be. Um, not working out religiously yet or doing three three days just yet but i did have my first experience so i had i was at uh one of our friends like kids birthday parties at uh at like a, a gym a gymnastics gym or whatever right and my sister-in-law's mother-in-law she came up to me and she's like danny you're looking good and she like rubbed my belly and she's in person's personal fitness because she hadn't seen me since like i stopped drinking and like everything else she's like you're looking good like proud of you keep going and like that just sparked something in my brain and i looked in the mirror for the very first time you're going to appreciate this one sam then because i did take a piece of what you've told me uh -huh. i was staring at myself in the mirror and i was like at first i was like i do look kind of good like compared to what i was like i look pretty good but then i was like i immediately had like my avatar like if you will like i looked at myself like a video game and i was like well what if my chest was a little bit bigger what if my shoulders were a little bit more round what if i had more definition in my right. biceps and i could see myself you're actually like visual as stuff yeah i was starting to visualize for the first time like what i would look like with a, the build that i'm going for right like not like bodybuilder necessarily but like if i had that build um and it's inspired me like i walk around with my chest a lot higher now i'm like actively working on my posture i'm going to the chiropractor again today so like i did commit to the chiropractor and like whether it's You're that's gonna work or not the benefits of like your mind is already thinking that <clears throat> very strong as well too you know it's crazy like how when you do start lifting like, like for me like it's so addicting for me to go to the gym and then get a pump right because that looks exactly what you want to look like and stuff so like i could go in really flat and then at the end you know like how hormozy is always like you get puffy uh it's a pump and it you could look exactly like uh what you want to look like which is it's such a cool feeling but once you start hitting some weights and start getting like making body composition changes the confidence level is it's it's great and you know having somebody validate you that's in the physical fitness space like that's why i compliment people all the time that's like one of my best openers is like even though i'm a physical fit i will go up to somebody and be like damn you have some amazing shoulders what do you do right and that that's almost an instant opener you know whether it be male or female and stuff but that's great that's good to hear yeah. So like it's starting, man. Like, so anyways, for me, still not there yet. Still fighting through, still struggling with the, like sitting down for 45 minutes to get it done. But I am starting to like envision what I would look like. And that's becoming more and more inspiring because now it's like, I can see it. It's tangible yeah. and I know what I need to do now. And now I just have to start to really do it. So um, how about you, man? Where are you at? I'm good. Uh, well, I wrote the hook uh, value proposition. <clears throat> Uh, on my refrigerator so I could see it. And I'm trying to incorporate that into like even my Instagram posts. Um, I so for, by the way, just to catch people up, his, so Sam, my task was 45 minute workout every single day, Monday through Friday. So that's what I'm working towards. That's what I'm referencing. I'm not there yet, not doing that yet, but I'm, that's my goal. Right. And for Sam Ning, his goal is to start work on content where the framework of the content is hook value payoff is yeah. the kind of core framework. So you can go back to previous episodes to hear more on that, but that's what we're catching up on. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Sam. Then. No, that's good uh, that you remind everybody. <laughs> I forget. I just uh, yeah, I know. You have to, we have to remind ourselves that like some people might this be the first episode that they're listening to. Right. So it's yeah. like, we probably need to give context. Um, 
mine is incorporating that into like my social media and like my brand and everything, which is good. I've done where TikTok where I kind of categorize something, but uh, I created a TikTok. And then I also, <laughs> interesting, I, I learned how to tweet on Instagram. Uh, yeah, you got a threads going. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I saw your post. You're like, I tweeted on Instagram and I shared it through Facebook. Like, whoa. It's, it's weird. Like you, when you start to open up your eyes to like social media and like marketing and stuff, like you find different avenues and stuff. But, and uh, I think I might've said a lot of uh, F words yesterday because I, I worked out and I was like feeling a lot of testosterone. I was like, oh, let me get on here and say a lot of F words. <laughs> fuck it, dude. It's all good. <laughs> it's, 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 it's terrible when your friends egg you on. You're like, fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep doing it. You're like, all right. Hey, man. Un un unapologetically you. Yeah. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something to help with, with this framework, okay? Yeah. So check this out. I'm going to share my screen. I don't think I've shown you this yet. It's called um, answerthepublic.com. You did share me this. I showed you this? Yeah, yeah. That's where I've been reading my blogs from. Awesome, man. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, that's right. I got it right here. So you shared it when you were asleep. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah, dude. I was probably, fr I know I was fried on one of those. So for those of you that don't know what this is, you throw in your keyword, right? So personal development. Um, Neil Patel, he's a famous digital marketer. He put this together. It's pretty brilliant. But like you can go to YouTube, right? And select this, by the way. So like this is showing you the Google results. Yeah. But, like here, like if you click YouTube, uh, it's going to make do it. All right, we'll just go back. So you have to sign up. You get three queries per uh, your free trial, right? Three daily, daily queries. You can pay for this. I'm not an affiliate to it or anything, but it's just helpful. So personal development. And then you have all of these questions. So they aggregate all of the most commonly asked questions across the internet. Yeah. So, you know, like, but you use our personal development courses tax deductible, right? Um, there's a great topic right there. I don't know that answer. Um, people are searching for that. They're curious about that. Like, can I write this off of my taxes? Maybe like if you're a business owner and you're treating, you know, the Peak Performance Academy and what Sam Ning's doing as, you know, a way of elevating yourself, right? And your business, then yeah, you probably could write it off. So, you know, like these are just some kind of cool topics and you could do this again for any topic. So anybody that's trying to create social media content or whatever, these are your hooks. Yeah. And then the payoff would be, you know, the value would be your story. I'm like, oh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I'm a business owner and I knew that if I needed to make myself better, um, then I would be able to accelerate my business. So I founded Peak Performance Academy and I wrote it off my taxes. So like finding Peak Performance Academy and writing off and yes and answering this query, that's the payoff, right? The hook is the question. The value is the story. The payoff is answering the hook. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I like that the website. There's a lot of good information there. That's why like uh, it's a good business model to provide a lot of good content, good information for people. And that's kind of like for me too, like for like samnangman.com and Peak Performance Academy, like uh, podcasting and putting the content out there and Instagram story is, I'm trying to answer the questions that I, I hear from like our coaching calls and from like my questions. People don't uh, answer or like ask uh, directly, but like in my private messages and stuff, what I'm answering is actually what I, people are asking me or just kind of trying to get clarity on too. So that's where I get most of my content or most of like what I'm thinking about. And I think it comes off as naturally and then people, people, it, it resonates with people and to uh, stuff. So that's why like people uh, don't message me and everything and we'll create like, uh, and that, and that's kind of marketing or networking is just getting their attention. They spark some kind of interest so they could have a question and then you start a conversation and then invite them. Hey, would you like to be a part of the community? You know, it's not like I'm going for a close immediately or anything on the sale. They're getting content, they are trusting me. And then I'm also inviting them to be a part of the community as well too. And then there'll be courses uh, for purchase. So they know that, Hey, I'm a quality dude, I'm a quality business and the content is legit as well too. So, and I'm also providing free content as well too. It's the same with uh, all the good, uh, marketers, it's the same, provide good content, provide good content until, um, when you're ready to work with us, you're ready to work with us. Right. <laughs> yep. That's it, man. Dude. So yeah, let's, uh, yeah. 
keep going at it. Let's circle up. I think I gave you like, try to do this with everything that you're doing as far as content and try and knock out three of them. I know you started on TikTok. That's great. You're on threads. So, um, I'm, I'll keep an eye on it over this next week as you put out content. I'm going to, I'm going to be looking for that framework in there. All right. Let's, let's fuck some more framework. <laughs> yeah, dude, there you go. Okay. But here, awesome. Man. Yeah, man. I gotta go take a pee pee. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining, guys. Um, like I mentioned, FIFO every Monday at 6 a.m. and Friday at 4 p.m. So we can catch you on your way into your work week and on the way into your weekend. And uh, this whole channel is around raising the collective vibrations, right? Um, flow in, flow out. That's it. Sam Nang Man, Danny Marowinski. Thank you, guys. Nice work, Danny. All right. All right, bro. Appreciate you. See ya. Bye-bye.